Good morning. It's 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda, and I want to talk to you this morning about holy cow. I was reading through my journal. Do you have one of these? I was reading through my journal, and what I realized is that there are so many dreams that literally, there are so many dreams that literally die in these journals, right? Do you have a journal? If you have a journal, good morning, Cherie. If you have a journal, then tell me that you have a journal and say, yes, I have a journal. Just go do that right now. Yes, I have a journal if you have a journal. So I'm reading through this journal. Well, first of all, let me back up for a second. I'm like, you know, I, I guess you would say that I'm a driven person. And maybe you can relate to this or you can't, but I literally am always looking for ways to better my life. I'm very conscious about the fact that um, every day that goes by that I, that I, you know, sit on the couch or don't really get active, like I get on myself. Do you know what I mean? Like if you were to ask my husband, it's like, I'm all like, I'm always on this mission, like to have more fun. Like, how do we have more fun? How do we, you know, I'm always on the mission of growing the business that never, ever goes away. It's never gone away for me. Meaning that I love growing hardcore business. But with that being said, you know, I used to be one track mind where it was all business and it was no fun. And so years and years and years ago, I developed this muscle on having fun and creating something I call flex time. Flex time is where you take time off. So basically I take the last week of every month and I take it off. Right. And um, if there's five weeks in a month, I take two weeks off a month. Right. So it works out to be about five months a year collectively because I don't work on weekends and I don't work the month of December it works out to be about five months or just over five months a year that I actually have off time so I belong to two uh, groups of entrepreneurs and uh, one is strategic coach with Dan Sullivan who he's amazing and the other one is genius network and can I tell you how many people are workaholics that work seven days a week it's I mean, it's probably one of the biggest pieces of work that Dan Sullivan does with his mastermind is getting people to take something he calls free days. I call them flex time. So so anyway, so long story short, you know, it's kind of like you keep getting better. It's, it's kind of like having a baby. You have a baby and it's like, holy cow, breastfeeding feels brutal, right? And then it's like, am I ever going to make it through this stage where I'm going to start to like breastfeeding? And And then you do or you don't and you give up. Right. And these are always our choices. We can make a choice to give up or we can make a choice to keep going. And so I've gotten addicted to keep going and focusing on whatever I'm resisting to get through it. So if I would have given up breastfeeding, this isn't about breastfeeding, but you get what I'm saying. I I would never have experienced a year and a half breastfeeding my child. If I would have given up growing this company, I wouldn't experience the financial freedom of never having to look at a price tag, right? Just whatever it is that I want to do, I do it and I never look at a price tag. I don't even think twice about investing, you know, a lot of money. A hundred thousand dollars doesn't it doesn't it doesn't even phase me anymore. The reason why I share that with you is not to brag or boast, it's to say that the road to to freedom really comes from the mental bandwidth in which the way that you think. You know, I would even go as far as to say that it comes from your faith. It comes from if you believe that you are responsible for everything, then you're going to be stressed out and worried. But if you believe that there's a higher calling, there's a higher power, there's God, then you're going to start to err into letting go of some of the emotional triggers that you have that prevent you from stepping forward. So it's like this. We pray, we pray, we pray. Or maybe you meditate, meditate, meditate. And then it's like, please have somebody show up to show me how to grow a business. And then that mentor walks in front of you. And then they tell you how much it cost. And then it's like, boom, we go back into retraction and we say no, because we serve money, not the higher power. Right. So as we're kind of taking these these journeys, I've kept a journal. Right. And I have lots of them. Do you have lots of journals? I have lots of these journals. Tell me if you have a lot of journals or am I alone out here? Right. So I'm reading through. This is my recent journal and I'm reading through my, my recent journal. And I'm reading through, like, I've created an entire outline around a new book that I wanted to call Driven. And some of you guys already know this. One of my friends ended up launching a whole site around Driven. Um, 
and now she has this whole program or this whole event around driven. So I do have a choice in that moment to get angry, or I could believe in Elizabeth Gilbert's work, Real Magic, where if you don't activate the dream right away, so say God gives you the dream and you don't activate the dream right away, that somebody else is going to take it, right? Because the dream wants to come through no matter what. And so often we feel like we have to not, maybe not you, but I do know that people feel like they have to hide their dreams and not talk about them so that they don't get taken away. Well, I shared my dream with my friend and she ended up thinking it was her idea when she woke up one morning, you know, three months later and created this whole event around it. I have no energy on that. Like I have no energy on that. All I think about is, okay, so there's got to be a deeper, like there's a deeper thing that I'm doing with this. So I'm still on the same track of the dream, but I've tweaked the whole conversation around it. So now the dream, instead of, instead of it being, you know, writing a book about driven people. So it was about this whole concept of how do you not shut down your drive, right? Like how do you not feel guilty being a wife, um, a husband, a, um, you know, a, a parent, like, how do you not feel guilty and still go after what you want? Right? Like, 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 how do you, how do you keep expanding? Like you have a life too. And if you limit your life, then your kids will limit their life. And then it becomes like a DNA thing where it becomes the culture of your family that everybody limits their life. Right? So there's this interesting balance of like, if there is a God, which I believe there is, then this driven mind was gifted to me, was gifted to you. And so how do you not human side shut it down and access the full unlimited list of what's possible for you? So that's kind of where I've been for the last few years. And so I thought, oh, my gosh, I can interview Sarah Blakely. I called her. She said, I'm happy to do something in the book. Um, you know, I thought like then I started running into you know, psychologists. And then of course, now I ran into a psychologist that wrote the book driven. And it's like, it's kind of like you grab onto this dream and other people have done it. Now I'm going inv to invite you to jump onto the bandwagon with people who are already doing what you want to do. In other words, you're stronger together, right? You don't have to hide your dreams. You don't have to be afraid that somebody's going to steal it. I guarantee you somebody already has the idea. And somebody's probably already doing it, which is great news because if there's a market for it, that means that there's, it, it works. In other words, it doesn't have to be just business, but you know, if there's a market for you getting married, then you're going to meet more men or more women, right? Like, so it's like when you're onto something, it has a connection that plugs in and works, but we're better together. There's this whole thought process that especially entrepreneurs have we call ourselves some some of us call ourselves solo entrepreneurs like who came up with that there is nothing good about being solo i mean if you do read scripture you'll realize that isolation is not exactly a safe place right that's exactly where the enemy whatever you want to call it comes in and has you that's where you get that's where the wolf gets the sheep that's straight up right so notice that whatever your spiritual belief is that you can actually see that there's there's teachings around the fact that being alone is not a good deal. Like being an entrepreneur, a solo entrepreneur behind a computer is not a good idea if you're not plugging into more people. Now don't just plug into your peers, plug into people who are already doing what you love and actually help them get ahead. Some of my best partnerships are people who do exactly what I do. They already have the audience that already likes what I do and let's be honest, if you have an email list and you've ever done email marketing, if you have 20% of your email list that opens up to your work, that means that there's a whole lot of other people who would love to be served by other people who have a different tweak on what it is that you're delivering. In other words, community, work in community, work in tribes, help other people get ahead and you're going to find that you're going to get further ahead. Shut down those thoughts that they're evil thoughts inside your head that say that there's something called competition. If I promote this person or I support this person, then all of a sudden one of my clients is going to leave. I teach this to my clients a lot when I do something called a bring a friend contest, right? You've got to shut down some of these thought processes so that you're fully accessible to be able to grow your vision and your dream. So back to the journal. 
I invite you to look in your journals and just flip through them today, right? Just really do this. Flip through them today and look at what dream you might be shutting down or you're even forgetting and see how you feel emotionally, like feel the emotional hit when you read it. Feel the emotional hit. Is there still an emotional hit there? And if there's still an emotional hit there, maybe you want to look at bringing this back out. I love wall size post-its. Um, if you go to, if you're in America, there's Staples or Best Buy, whatever, you can go get a wall size post-it. And I put these wall size post-its up in my house because that's where I run my company from. And I, uh, I will, I, I am going to put my new dream up there because if it stays in this journal, it goes into the abyss. It might happen in two or three years. And I want this to happen definitely by next year which means that my team and I want to start working on this now. We want to get a book proposal out. We want to, um, I really want to go after being a New York Times bestseller. I don't know why. Like sometimes, you know, at, at church last week, they said, sometimes you don't need to understand why, why God is working in your life or if you call it spirit or whatever it is that you call it, right? Like sometimes you don't need to know why or how it's working in your life. I don't know why I want to be a New York Times bestseller. It's a way that I'm being obedient and doing it. I mean, yes, I can see the logic in why it'll open up more doors and it'll get me on, you know, bigger and better stages. It'll get me in front of a larger audience. I understand that, but a lot of people write books and it gets them nowhere, right? So the work that, that I will have to put into this, the work my family will have to put into this, the agreements I'll have to make with my family while I do this, but the power that my son and my husband are going to see as far as me going after something that's really important to me, right, is incredible. Now I become a role model inside my own family. So I really think it's, let me actually unpack that for a second. There will have to be sacrifices in my family for me to become a New York Times bestseller. First of all, I've never done it before. Second of all, my friends who have done it say it's one of the hardest things they've ever done. So I'm kind of mentally preparing myself for that. I'm open to it not being that hard but I'm not gonna be crazy and try and positive think my mind into it not like thinking it's not gonna be work, it's gonna be work. But my husband and I have a great partnership in the essence that I 100% support him growing a company called Highburst, right? And I and we create systems around our company, our company, our, our marriage that that kind of runs like a company where there's agreements on on what does what does dating look like? What does you know intimacy look like? What does fun look like? You know, I, one of my agreements with my husband is we need to take a few trips a year that are just us, meaning that just us and and Zach and you know like it's family. Like I I, I really have a need to go to Europe or Barbados or you know I, I really have a need and to shut it down. Like for me, that's the equivalent of what makes me happy and makes me feel connected to my family. So that means there's no cell phones, there are no, no computers, we're not trying to work. You know, we're actually just present because I feel like when you're distracted, you lose presence if you're trying to multitask. So that's my request in the marriage, right? And so we do that. Um, my request is that we don't speak business after five, that we don't work on weekends. And that is upheld inside of our family. Right. So my husband has different requirements that are for him. But when we're doing something like a New York Times bestseller, we have to make other agreements on top of it because there's a time frame now. Like maybe it's a year, maybe it's 10 months. How are we going to work the marriage and the family? It's going to have to look different because I'm going to have to work differently. Right. So I just invite you to, you know, really look at what it is that you're committing to. Make sure you're making agreements with people in your life that you love. Know that great things take work. There's nothing in scripture that says it doesn't. I don't know why we put these human limits on ourselves or those these human superpowers that we think that we can handle it all at the same time. We need to create agreements around our life so that we can have permission and even give ourselves permission to go after a big vision or a big dream. So take your journals out today and take a look at what dreams are possibly about to die. Now, I want to give you this piece. Um, I am training right now with a guy by the name of Todd Durkins. He trains football players and um, baseball players. And, you know, it's amazing. He actually, um, I'm going to have him on coffee with Shanda because he's amazing. But um, I met Drew Brees the other day. I had no idea who he was, the quarterback. 
Um, really nice guy from what I got. Really seems like an average person, like there's no ego that's kind of surrounding him. It was really beautiful. Um, but my point in sharing that with you is Todd trains, you know, Drew Brees, and he trains, you know, his nemesis. Basically, his competitor flies in and they train together because they get stronger together, right? And my point in sharing that piece with you is I'm reading Todd's book right now. I think it's called Total Body Impact or The Impact Body Plan. Um, if you Google it on Amazon, you can, I'm sure you can, it's got a yellow cover. It's an amazing book. I'm not really big on reading fitness books um, or nutritional books. I actually quite find them quite boring. But his book is incredible. I mean, it, it, it's It's incredible. I'm learning about the human body and why I get sore, why you might, like if you have a knee problem, it's often a hip tightness, but yet we go to the doctors and we get injected with cortisol or we get surgeries and, you know, it's like I'm learning all this stuff from his book that is really motivating. Well, one of the things he has you do in the book is he has you create what's called a now inventory. And a now inventory, and I did it last night, and basically for 20 minutes, he recommends you set a timer for 20 minutes. This was like plaguing me. It was like this voice was, cut, go do it, go do it, go do it. You know, like don't allow this to die on a piece of paper in the corner of your desk. Go do it, go do it, go do it. And so I sat down and I did a now inventory based on Todd Durkin's book. And basically you set a timer for 20 minutes and you write for 20 minutes. Is this helping? If this is helping, just say yes, this is helping. If you like this, let me know. Um, and so you write for 20 minutes on like taking inventory on where your life is at now. And I actually surprised myself. Here's something I wouldn't want anybody to know about myself that I'm going to tell you. And, and the reason why I'm going to tell you is because it's vulnerable. And vulnerability actually creates connection. So what I'm doing right now is I'm pulling the curtains back to what I'm doing as uh, a business owner, an online personality, um, a marketer. I don't like to do things to you. I like to tell you why I'm doing things. I like to teach while I'm doing it. So, um, you know, the first beginning of my list was negative. I'm embarrassed to say that. I mean, I was like really critical. And, and then it went from being really critical to me being aware of how critical I was being. And I was being critical about people in my life, right? And and critical about my situation and critical. And then I'm like, holy cow, this is an awareness moment, right? Like what an awareness moment. And then it shifted into gratitude. And I have a ton of things to be grateful for. I think you could probably look in your own life and realize you have a ton of things to be grateful for. And recently I've had some negative people that I've been reading some of their stuff and it's so quick that those things start to get inside your head plus I have a situation where someone in my family is very very sick and they're really grumpy and they have a lot to be happy about like I pick up all their bills do you know what I mean like they have no worries and you know I think gosh I would be grateful if I was that sick and and somebody was taking care of me right at least they don't have to worry about like any of their bills and I'm grateful that I can do that and I'm grateful that I have a heart to do that but it's like it's so, I share this with you because first of all it's important to share vulnerable real moments when you're out there doing your marketing and sharing things and and just being a real person across these internet you know these these videos these cameras right but secondly it's like do the inventory list the now list and do an inventory list of where your life's at and notice Right, Todd says write for 20 minutes and don't stop. And just notice what, just don't edit it. Like don't try and be positive, don't try and be negative, don't try and be critical, don't try and be anything, just be you. And just go, just brainstorm. And it was absolutely powerful, this process. And then he had you shift and write, I don't even know if I'm saying this word right, I think it's called a decree. Basically, I, it's a vision. And he said, right now, look at that list and write what you'll look like, what you'll feel like in 10 weeks from now, which his program is 10 weeks. Right. And so, right. And so I wrote, you know, what my life was going to look like in 10 weeks from now, not just my fitness, not just, you know, the way I feel, but, you know, even the way I eat, 
like like packing my like I'm Nathan our chef is packing my food in portion control like glass Tupperware um, containers and it's so easy for me to grab them from the fridge and eat them on a daily basis and I've got my own cooler that I take with me to events that I have my food in and I eat from there right I just saw my friend Bedros who is in incredible shape right now and he's like packing his food right in portion control pieces and I'm like going like successfully clues right so I'm writing I take my now list and I'm writing now my vision of what it looks like in 10 weeks from now. And my relationships in there, my mommyhood's in there, a vacation is in there that we're booking right now. Um, and it was powerful. And then he recommends you take that and you put it on an index card. So I share all this with you because, you know, there's a kind of a lot in this coffee with Shanda, but I would recommend that you don't just listen to this and think it's a great idea and allow a vision or a dream to die in a journal or allow these notes to be scribbled on a piece of paper in the corner of your desk or your house. I recommend that you you actually do these things. Pull out your journal. Here's the summary. Pull out your journal. Start reading through it. Is there a dream in it that gives you an emotional hit? And if it is, why don't you take it out and put it on a wall size post-it and just look at it daily and see, is it calling you? And if it is, then create agreements around your life to be able to create that because I believe that that's God. And I believe that we limit what's possible in our life because of our families, because of our friendships, because of the people around us, because of our preconceived ideas about what makes us a good human being, right, in a unit of our life. Then shift and do the now. Do the now inventory list. Take inventory of where your life's at now. Write that for 20 minutes. And then move that into a vision where what does it look like in 10 weeks from now or what does it look like in two months from now what does your life look like if you're operating from that standpoint we and i'll end on this we far too often operate our lives based on reacting reacting to our businesses reacting to the next event we're going to you know it's very easy to be in the rat race even if you are financially free because the world is always calling on a demand on you and i think one of the best gifts i ever gave myself was the power of being present to exactly what I want and not chasing the holy dollar, not chasing fame, not chasing a bigger business and still having the drive to create all of that. So here's my gift to you. I hope that Coffee with Shanda was successful for you. I hope that it makes an impact on you. If it does, I would love to hear your takeaway. I would love you to share this. You know that I look at the shares. That way I know that you actually enjoyed this Coffee with Shanda. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern on Coffee with Shanda. Talk to you soon. Bye.